Hey guys, happy new year. In today's video, we are checking out a UHF antenna distribution system by Phoenix Pro. This is the PAS225. So this system will do quite a few things. So most importantly, it will power all of your wireless gear and it also distributes the wireless signal to all of your wireless receivers with just two antennas. So the benefit of doing something like this is that because if you have a bunch of wireless in a rack, you can have the antennas stacked on top of each other and that's a great way to get your wireless systems to drop out or lose range and just have all sorts of problems. So these antennas instead will send the wireless signal to all of your wireless receivers. So for example, if you have four wireless microphones all in a rack, that would be eight antennas just stacked on top of each other, which again is not a recommended way to use wireless. So instead you can use something like the PAS225, which will combine and distribute that wireless signal to all of the wireless receivers. So instead of having eight, antennas stacked on top of each other, you now only have two that send the wireless signal to multiple receivers. That might sound complicated, but it's really not that complicated. And it'll make much more sense once we get through to the setup portion of this video. I've been using it live recently at a couple of my gigs, and it's been working great. So in this video, I'm going to cover the setup, what's included, how to use a system like this, how it differs from different antennas, why you might need something like this, and so on and so forth. I've been wanting to get something like this for quite a while, and I'm really grateful that Phoenix Pro sent this to me to check out. This is not a paid video. All the opinions in this video are my own. If I didn't like the product, I would not feature it on my channel. Also, if you do decide to purchase this system or any other Phoenix Pro product from their website and you use promo code Scott you will Music at checkout, you will get 5% off your entire purchase. So before we get started, my channel is kind of a music tech channel, gear reviews, tutorials, programming. I do gear giveaways on this channel. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe and hitting the thumbs up button is a free way to support the channel. All right, let's check out this system. Okay, so first off, let's quickly go over what's included. So first of all, it has a nice carrying case. It's packaged really well, and the case can actually be used for bringing the antennas from show to show. I originally didn't think I would need this after I had this system set up, but it's actually really nice to bring your microphones and other stuff on top of having the paddles in this case when you go from show to show. So very nice that they included that. So this is the main unit right here. It's 1U, so it doesn't take up that much room in a rack, just 1U of space. And this is the back, and I'm going to go over this a little bit more once we go over the setup. So these are the two main antennas or paddles as you can call them sometimes. These are called the PAS82 directional antennas, which I can't seem to get in the frame for some reason, but these connect to the PAS225. And these are the antennas that will distribute the wireless signal to your wireless gear. Also included, these are the B and C cables for connecting your antenna ports from the back of your wireless receivers to the main unit. There are 10 small ones for that, and there are two longer ones, and the longer ones are used to connect to the antenna paddles themselves. They also have a power supply for the main unit as well as four different DC power cords and these are used to power your wireless receivers. This is an active antenna distribution system so the PAS225 will power your receivers as well which is great because then you don't have to plug in a bunch of cables in the back of your rack. Okay, so for setup. So for this example, I will be doing this with a PTU-2U, a PTU-1U, and a Shure SLX-D system. I already put everything in the rack for this video, and I've done reviews on all of these, which you can see on my channel, which I'll post up above and down below. And I'll also post down in the description the different rack cases that I recommend with different sizes. Okay, so a few things to know about what type of gear will work with this. So first of all, you'll notice that in my rack, I have some Phoenix Pro wireless gear, as well as my Shure wireless gear. So yes, that does mean that this can work with other wireless systems, not just Phoenix Pro products. So this is a UHF antenna distribution system. So that means if you have a wireless system that operates between 400 and 950 megahertz, it will work with this system. So if you use something in like 2.4 gigahertz, this will not work for you. If you don't know what that meant, I have a video about that. You can check it out by clicking the link up above or down below in the description. Okay, and second, your antennas have to be removable from your wireless systems. So with all the systems that I'm using, the antennas come off and you can attach them with cables to get them to the front, or you can just attach the antennas to the back. So some gear like this is my old PGX system, the antennas do not come off of this, I cannot remove these antennas, and therefore it will not work with this system. So you do have to make sure that your antennas are removable in order to use it with this system. And the last thing I want to go over is that this is 
receiving a wireless signal, it is not transmitting a wireless signal. So this does not work with in-ear monitors. This system is for wireless mics, wireless instruments, guitar, bass, violin, stuff like that. I do plan to eventually do a video about doing this with in-ear monitors as well. And I know that Phoenix Pro has said that they are working on a system for that as well. All right, back to the setup. So you can do this in any order that you want. Just keep the main unit powered off while you're doing this initial setup. So first, plug in the antennas from the wireless receivers into the distributor with the short BNC cables. So you can see it says RF output A, RF output put B and you have four of them under each. So for my SLXD, I'm going to connect one BNC cable from the antenna A to the distributor on my antenna A4. I'm doing this four because SLX is on the bottom. So it's the easiest one to remember. And I just like to work from the bottom up. That's just me. So but I'm connecting it to A4. That's for the SLXD. Then I'm going to connect another BNC cable from antenna B to the distributor on antenna B4. So you do want to make sure that they're connected to the correct number. So for the SLX, I'm going into A4 and B4. You don't want to do like A4 and B3, for example. If your wireless only has one output, you can choose either A or B antenna. Just make sure it's not being used by another wireless system. So if I had another system that only has one antenna, I would go into A3 and I would leave B3 blank. So next, I'm going to connect the PTU1U antenna A to A3 and antenna B to B3. You can probably see what you're supposed to do now. I'm going to repeat the process for the other two outputs from the PTU to you as well. So you get the idea. Okay, so now you want to plug the antennas or the paddles, the PAS82 antenna paddles into the distributor. And that's where these longer BNC cables are for. And you want to connect this where it says antenna A and antenna B. So when I do this live, I'm going to attach the paddles to a mic stand and, you know, they'll be at the correct height. For this video, I'm just going to leave them on top of the rack just so it fits in the frame. So in order to connect the paddles to the distributor, distribution system, you're going to take one of the long BNC cables and plug antenna A on the distribution system into one of the paddle antennas. And then you're going to do the same thing where it says antenna B, and you're going to plug that in to one of the PAS82 paddle antennas. So next, you're going to want to power your gear because again, this is an active antenna distribution system. So it also powers all of your gear, which is awesome. The power is coming from one spot and you don't have to have a ton of different power cables in the back of the rack. So using the provider cables, you have these four ports up here, two on this side and then two on the other side. It says 12 volts, 1.1 amp max total. Most wireless systems should fit into this. I mean, just double, always just double check just to make sure, but most of them should be fine. So I'm going to plug one of them into each of the receivers. Notice that the PTU2U only needs one power to get power to both of the receivers, which is nice. So I personally only need to use three of these to power my gear. And then finally, plug in the power to the DC input to power the main unit. Then you want to power it up, power up each of your wireless receivers and you should see the wireless receivers come on and the paddle antennas should come on and give you a gain reading as well. So now the PAS225 is powering all of your wireless receivers and the PAS82 directional paddle antennas are distributing the wireless signal to all of your wireless receivers with just two antennas. Pretty sweet. Also, you can use the cascade out to get a fifth one as well. So if you do have a fifth one you want to connect, you can connect to cascade and that's a good way to get five of them all plugged into one. So what if you want to use more than four or five systems at once? So that's where the cascade option comes into play. So you do obviously need to get a second PAS225 system, but you have to get another set of paddle antennas? No, you actually don't. That's where cascade comes in. So you can connect two of the distributors together and send them out to just one pair of the paddle antennas. Really cool. So with that, you can now go from the cascade out and attach that to an antenna A and antenna B with another PSA 225 in order to connect both of them together. So now you can have up to eight wireless receivers connected with just two pairs of the paddle antennas. Pretty awesome. So after editing all of that together, I found this graph online. So if my graph didn't make any sense, pause the screen and look at this one if that helps you out. Okay, so as far as pricing and options, you can get both the PAS 225 and the PAS 82 directional paddle antenna together or separately. However, I think most of you are probably going to want them together. So together, as of time of shooting, this is listed at $339. That might seem like a lot, but just for reference, the cheapest Sure one is a little over $500, and you have to get the antennas and paddles separately, which are about $400. So it's about a grand to do this with another system. So this is about a third of the price, which is a pretty insane deal. And also don't forget to use promo code Scott Music at checkout from the Phoenix Pro website.
website in order to get 5% off your entire purchase. So it's even cheaper than that. And again, a link to that will be down in the description down below. If you do wish to buy them separately, the 225 distribution system by itself is listed at 230 as of shooting and the directional paddle antennas are 130 at this time of shooting, which is quite a good deal. But again, all of that will be linked down in the description down below. Okay, so some best practices for using antennas like this. For this system, they do recommend having the two paddle antennas 1.5 meters apart and 1.8 meters high. That's what they recommend. Stick with that as best as you can. So these antennas are directional antennas, and that means that they're going to receive the signal from a specific direction. So these, you know, are more normal antennas, and these are omnidirectional antennas. So that means it's going to get the signal from everywhere, front, back, left, right, it's going to get it equally all around. So these are directional antennas, which means that they're going to pick up the signal in the way that they are pointed and reject the wireless signal coming from behind it, which is what you want. These are often, you know, to the side of the stage or at front of house pointed directly at the stage. So that's a good thing. It's going to focus on getting the signal from the stage, which is where it needs to be getting signal from, and it'll reject the signal coming from other places behind the stage and stuff like that. With any antenna, having direct line of sight is definitely the best way to have the most reliable signal as well. If you are gonna put them at front of house or in the back of the venue or something like that, this can be common for like bars or some venues or churches and stuff like that where these antennas are in the back by the sound booth and they're pointed directly at the stage. Make sure that the antennas are up high enough so that there's not gonna be a bunch of people in there blocking the signal from the antennas to the transmitter. So that can happen sometimes as you go to sound check and it's working great, and then a bunch of people show up, and now there's a bunch of bodies just absorbing all of that wireless signal, and then the signal cuts out. You can always mount these to a ceiling or a wall or something like that if you need to achieve that height, especially if these are gonna be like a permanent installation. For me, when I use them, I put them on top of mic stands because I go from venue to venue to use these. So what about the gain setting on the paddles themselves? So first of all, you get up to eight decibels of gain and it's marked up to 16 a little bit confusing so it goes up by 0.5 decibels each level up so two is actually one decibel four is actually two decibel a little confusing but that's how it works sometimes you think just more gain is just always the best way to do it that's not actually the case as you can see from this article which i'll link down to below from the phoenix pro website excessive amplification is not always good otherwise it may lead to dropouts and signal noises since the paddle antennas need to pick up excessive signals from their front end so it's better to set the appropriate amount and not just crank the gain all the way up. So this graph actually kind of shows you in general about how far you are throwing the signal. You know, zero to 100 feet, set it to two decibels, which in this case would be four. And if you're going all the way out 160 feet, that's where you can start cranking it up a lot higher. So I did use these at a gig recently. It was a big corporate event. I was in charge of sound and lighting for it. It's a really big show, so it was really great to test them out for that show. And these worked great. They were nice and easy to use, nice and easy to set up. It only added about three extra minutes to my setup time. It was basically just attach the paddles to uh, mic stands and plug them in. And that was basically it and point them in the right direction. I mean, they worked great. None of the wireless that were attached to it cut out at all. I also did a range test. I walked as far as I could. It was a really big room. I walked as far away as I could from the receiver. The signal worked great. Six, two. Hey, hey, that's working. Zoom in. I got Chick, chick. Hey, hey. Yeah, yeah. One, two. All right. That works. So it worked great at that event. There was another event that I brought it to that was a much smaller space. One of the things that they mentioned with these types of antennas is if you're right by it, you know, if you're like 10 feet from it, you shouldn't be using something like this. It's unnecessary and it'll actually probably make it actually worse. I did an event. I don't know, what, man, I don't know if you guys have the same experience as I do. Some, if I do like a decent amount of private parties and corporate events and stuff like that, sometimes they give you just a nice, great, awesome stage. They want it to look great. And other times they're like, oh, a six piece band. Well, you know, a human can fit in a one by one space, right? So let's do a six by six stage in order to fit six musicians on there. I mean, I'm being, you know, a little sarcastic, but it was a very tiny space. I didn't know that until I got to the venue, but I did what I'm sure some of you would do as well. I went, I have new gear. I'm going to use it. I don't care. So I set it up anyways. So I was right by these antennas. I mean, like right there, it was like five feet away from me. 
it definitely gave me a lot of problems. And one of the most interesting ones is that, you know, it was pointed at the stage kind of behind a little bit towards where we were playing. And one of the things that I do is I have, you know, I go to my to one speaker and then I use these guys. It's a little just XLR adapter. I did a video on it. I'll link to it up above and down below. But I use this to transmit from one speaker to another speaker. So these guys were in direct, you know, line of sight of where these antennas were pointing at. So it actually gave me all sorts of noise and stuff with these. And again, these are cheaper ones with cheaper wireless gear, you know, they're more susceptible to interference and stuff like that. So when I turned off the antenna distribution system, these ended up working fine. However, I ended up, you know, taking down the 225 because I was like, well, this isn't going to work, you know, anyways, because because I learned my lesson. Don't put these right next to you. If you're right by them, you, you don't need to use this antenna distribution system like this. Then you're probably be better off with like, you know, an omnidirectional like combiner antenna or something like that. But do just keep in mind, you know, these are directional antennas and they're very strong antennas and you don't want them, you don't want to be standing right next to them. They are for throwing the distance a little bit further. So keep that in mind. But again, for that bigger stage, it worked fantastic. So this system is awesome though. I really like it. The one thing that I wish that they had is that the power would screw in on the back this one just plugs in and obviously if the main power gets unplugged accidentally that shuts off the power to everything that's connected to it so i wish it just screwed in to just make it a little more secure obviously just don't leave it in a spot that it can be bumped or the cable can be bumped and you should be fine but that was the one thing that i thought could be improved with this system that's about it though but overall the system works great i'm really glad that i have this in my arsenal now and i'm going to use it especially for like events where i'm running sound for like speeches and stuff like that or weddings or corporate events or if we're playing a large enough event where the wireless isn't right by us or something like that it has to be off to the side i'll definitely continue to use these so i'm really glad i have these in my arsenal now so once again if you do decide to purchase these or any other Phoenix Pro products, you can use the promo code Scott Ewell Music at checkout and you will get 5% off your entire purchase. Again, links to that will be down in the description down below. And I do know that Phoenix Pro has said that they are going to be doing one of these types of combiners for their in-ear monitor systems or just in-ear monitor systems in general. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what they come up with for that because I will definitely be interested in that because I use in-ear monitors basically at every show. But I hope that helped you guys out. If you guys made it to the end of this video, do me a favor just hit the thumbs up button it's a free way to support the channel and feed the youtube algorithm so i would appreciate it this is the first video that i've done with a new camera so let me know what you guys think i got a little bit of a new setup going on here check out some of the other phoenix pro products that i've reviewed their in-ear monitor systems especially are really good i really love their in-ear monitor systems my drummer and my singer both use them live at basically every show that we use and they've never had a problem with it. I'll link to those at the end screen, as well as down in the description down below. I've also reviewed their wireless guitar gear, wireless microphones and stuff like that, which are also great. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on my social media pages at Scott Ewell Music on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys again for watching. Many thanks to Phoenix Pro for sending me this product to check out, and I'll see you guys next time.